All right, so we are getting started. Welcome to everybody who is tuning in for our first of what will hopefully be a series of webinar Wednesdays hosted by Naboso Technology. Thank you to everyone who is tuning in. I know you have very, very busy days and uh, we greatly appreciate your time and dedication to understanding a little bit more about Naboso and of course, the topic of neuro rehabilitation. <laughs> If this is the first time of tuning in on anything by myself, Naboso, EBFA, which is one of my other companies, just so you know, this will be recorded. So if you happen to get disconnected, you want to listen to it again, this will be recorded and it will be housed on the Naboso YouTube channel. We will also be sending this and some of the video links to everyone who signed up and is tuning in so that you can reference back, you can follow Carl who's our presenter's work and learn a little bit more about the topics. The way that this is going to go down is that we will have approximately 35, 40 minutes of education. And then after the education, we are going to do some Q and A. So if you have any questions that you think of as we're doing the presentation, you may type those in on the questions tab of the control panel. So again, on the control panel, you will see the questions tab, just type those in and we'll go over some questions at the end. We are ready to get started. So very special welcome to our presenter, Carl Sterling, who is the founder and creator of Parkinson's Regeneration Training and the founder of PhysioChain's Education Company. He's also one of the master instructors for my other company, EBFA, and is an incredible presenter. You guys will very much enjoy what you will be learning in the next 40 minutes or so. I'm going to pass the floor to you, Carl, and we're really looking forward to this. Well, first of all, thank you. What a what a beautiful introduction. So thank you so much for the opportunity, Dr. Emily. Um, thank you, everybody who's tuning in. It's uh, exciting for me to be able to share this information because um, obviously you'll find out as I go through it, I'm very passionate about it. And there's, there are so many things we can do to help people to move better that maybe some of us don't know about. And I'm always researching, learning, um, trying to learn more and more and more and get, raise my skill set, improve that and share it with others so we can help more people. So we have a lot of information to go over in the next 35, 40 minutes. So I'm going to get started. Uh, let's start off with this. Okay. This is uh, an interesting, this, actually, this is the basis for my program. What I look at in the, in the let's say, the world of uh, movement, um, and I have to say medicine too. Uh, I will never knock the medical community, but when it comes right down to it, uh, between, let's say, uh, the, the medical community, the, the physiotherapists, uh, and a lot of personal trainers out there, there's a lot of information that they could acquire, but they don't know it's there yet. There's also on the left side of this education filling the void uh, arrow here, right? The spectrum. We also have this this uh, this goal of filling the education gap. So what this means is we have, let's say, over on the right, functional life for the person that we're talking about. It maybe it's somebody with Parkinson's disease. Maybe it's a, a movement disorder of another type, or they just have trouble moving, or they move well and they want to move better. Well, we have the functional life for these people, okay? We also have on the left side where your medical care, let's say your physio care and medical care, neurology care, whatever it may be, is lacking or maybe is non-existent. I mean, even in the United States, we have some uh, people who struggle to achieve uh, or I say receive care that they need. Uh, I travel all over the world and I find that in many countries, this is a really big issue. So. What happens is, as, as humans, as people, but especially those who are professionals, let's say physiotherapists, physical therapists, uh, uh, neurologists, some of the more progressive ones, um, fitness trainers, movement specialists, we can help to bridge the gap and fill the void 
between where the medical care is lacking or stops and functional life for the person we're dealing with. So that's the goal for my programs. The whole reason I wrote it is to try to learn more and educate more. So let's move forward. What's our target? Well, back years ago, um, I, I, I didn't think like this because I couldn't. I didn't know this stuff yet. You know, I was doing some typical assessments as a trainer, um, you know, various types of assessments that are common in a lot of different modalities. And uh, I, there's relevance to all of these. But I will say that I work mostly with people with movement disorders and particularly uh, more than anything, people with Parkinson's disease. And no matter who it is, no matter what the issue is, or maybe they don't have an issue, but if they want to move better, my primary target, the first thing I'm thinking about, rather than the traditional assessments and programming is, I wanna wake up the nervous system and I wanna wake up the brain. This is a huge deal. And you'll discover why as we go through this. So moving forward, I put this slide in because we are talking about innovations in neuro rehabilitation. Now, some of the things that we're going to talk about are products that are relatively new or very new on the market that I have discovered that I like that we're getting great results with. But there's also stuff that's been around for a long, long time that tends to be underutilized that helps with neuro rehabilitation. So remember, let's go back. We're looking at wake up the nervous system and the brain. So let's talk about the brain. Moving forward, all of these things that are listed here, movement, play, music, and learning, science shows, research shows, they are all connected. Now I can tell you personally, I have a difficult time reading and comprehending. I'm close to figuring out what it is after I went to a vision specialist recently. But bottom line is, I know that if I move, I learn better. So I could listen to an audio book, let's say, and I'll remember a lot more than I read. And that's maybe irrelevant in some ways, but for me it's important because at least I'll learn more. But when I really learn more is when I move. I will learn more when I move. And I especially, if I'm doing something I enjoy, like we can call it play. Play is like a big deal, right? People aren't going to do as much movement if they don't like what they're doing. So if we can make it as, let's say, uh, for lack of better words, playful as possible, enjoyable as possible, it's, it's probably gonna help them to move more. If they're trying to learn anything, it might help them learn better. But as we go through this tonight, we'll also see that learning has more to do with just, than just learning something new. We're actually gonna be talking about neuroplasticity plasticity in the, the brain, how we can learn to do new things, all right? To let's say improve our movement. And music, when we throw music in the, the equation, there's a lot of research that shows that we will learn better if we have music. So think about all of these things, movement, play, music, and learning. Think about is this in the context of the brain and developing the brain. And as we go through again, you'll uh, this will start to make more sense, especially when we talk about the brain that can change itself. Okay, so that's one neuro rehabilitation idea that we use all the time. And it's, it's fantastic. Let's move forward. Now, in particular, with the person with Parkinson's, but let's say for you know, maybe anybody out there, uh, if they want to move better, um, they have a movement disorder, they're having problems with movement. It could be like my mother, she had problems walking. She's doing much better now, but we, our goal is we want to help them move better. There's a, a demographic of people who are uh, prone to falls. And it, it's in a lot of different places, but especially with Parkinson's, this is a really big deal. So. We want to help them to reduce their fall risk and the number of falls. So if we can create changes and create improvements in movements, uh, I'm sorry, improvements in musculoskeletal balance. Also, if we can create improvements in the peripheral nervous system that feeds in through the central nervous system to the brain, then back out to the peripheral. All of this is gonna be very helpful. This is our goal. All right, so 
waking up the nervous system, waking up the brain is go going to help to achieve these, uh, these results. All right, so I do talk a lot about Parkinson's, but let's go through some other things. Let's go right through to the bottom. All humans, what do you know? Well, we're all human, right? We, we all have a brain. We all have a nervous system, okay? So we can all benefit from the things that we'll be talking about in neuro rehabilitation. Maybe somebody doesn't need neuro rehabilitation, but I can promise you we're gonna be de dealing with the nervous system and helping them to move better. And let's say, uh, maybe it's an athlete, improve their performance. All right, let's just take a look. Now, uh, I have this slide in here. I'm gonna talk about Alzheimer's and Parkinson's because later, I want you to remember these slides and what we talk about in these two slides because it's very, very, very important when we start to talk about brain health, cardio, and some growth factors. Let's look at the number one neurological disorder in the world, which is Alzheimer's disease. In this disease, there's a particular part of the brain which has, uh, it's called the hippocampus. This is like a, you know, it's responsible for a lot of things, but it's especially um, noticeable when you see that somebody with Alzheimer's is starting to forget things. Well, this is like a memory portion of the brain, one of the portions. We have brain cells that are dying. They're dying in the hippocampus. So memory is, uh, as it says here, impaired. And this will get worse as the disease progresses. The number two movement disorder or neurological disorder in the world is Parkinson's. So if we look at this, we'll see on the left from the top view of the skull, there's a little area in the brain um, called the substantia nigra. It's the midbrain area. All right, if we blow that up and look in the upper right, we're gonna see that the substantia nigra is shaped a little bit like a butterfly. And you'll see that on a healthy substantia nigra, as you see on the top right, we have dopamine. Well, how do you know? Because that dark substance up there at the top, if you can see my mouse right here, that's dopamine. So this would rep represent a healthy substantia nigra. The thing is, is in Parkinson's, this is the area of the brain that is dying. It's losing brain cells. So as they're dying, they produce less dopamine. All right, dopamine is produced in more places in the body than just this area. But this is a primary production center. And also the substantia nigra is a very primal movement control center in, uh, in, the human, uh, in humans, right? So what we see here is less dark substance. This means brain cells are dying. They're not uh, providing or producing as much dopamine. Dopamine, the reason it's so important, it's a neurotransmitter. It is a chemical messenger that transfers be, uh, 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 between brain regions and to the body so that it tells you what you wanna do. Like if I wanna take a step, I have a healthy substantia nigra, then I can be standing and then I can just take a step and I'm fine. There's no hesitation. Because the neurotransmitter, the chemical messenger is working and functioning perfectly, as far as I know, in my, in my brain. You, if you've seen somebody with Parkinson's, you may realize or have noticed they're frozen. It might take them two, three, four, five seconds or longer to take that stuff. They know they want to do it consciously, but that newer transmitter is like, it's diminished, so the message isn't getting to the leg or the foot or to the nerves in those areas to, to actually make them move instantly like a healthy person would, right? So that's what's happened in Parkinson's. Uh, substantial nigra losing brain cells, control of movement is impaired. This will get worse as time goes on. So those are the two, go back to, uh, well, you already saw Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Keep these in mind as we go forward. Sip of water. All right, so not just park well we'll talk about parkinson's what is our most immediate concern for people with parkinson's that would be falling there are a much higher risk of falls and injury now there are quite a few uh, demographics if you look out there that are more prone to falling so uh, this neuro rehabilitation these technologies and products 
are going to be helpful for everybody. Um, but in Parkinson's, this actually, uh, complications from a fall are actually the number one cause of death. So we really want to work to wake up the nervous system and the brain to keep them from falling down and hurting themselves. They have twice the fall risk of their of their peers. In this particular study, everyone in the study had Parkinson's. 38% fell during the study. 13% fell more than once per week. 13% experienced experienced broken bones. 18% went to the hospital. 3% wind up confined to a wheelchair. So you can see that um, it's very evident that falls can be very bad, and it can it can cause death, actually, complications from a fall. So we want to keep them from falling. So let's move forward. There are people who are not aware of the risk of falling. And I think this is a really important point. Um, one of the last slides before we get into some of the technologies and products we use to help to, uh, people to move better and with their neural rehabilitation. And I'm sorry if you're seeing anything on my screen here. For some reason, the message is popping up. All right, so there's a thing called the fall awareness spectrum. This is like the what this represents is a person's awareness of their likelihood of falling. So over on the left, so it's, actually, let me back up for a minute. There are people who have no idea of how likely it is that they will fall. There are some people who are way over to the left and they have what we call fall phobia. They're so afraid of falling, they actually overestimate their risk of falling. And therefore, they tend to live a more sedentary lifestyle, and this is not what we want, right? On the other side, we have what we call reckless gait, and I've met people like this, I've worked with people like this. They actually underestimate the risk of falling. They tend to engage in more dangerous activities, and what happens there is they increase their risk of falling and they tend to fall down more. So we don't want either of these uh, sides of the spectrum, so these extremes. What we want is, if you can see my mouse, right here, the little arrow, our awareness of falling should fall right in the middle so that we don't live a sedentary lifestyle, but we get moving and we stay safe moving. Uh, there's a link down here which um, you can click on and you'll be able to go to the actual test. This is a 14, 14 question. Uh, um, self-administered tests that the, the client or patient can download, they can fill it out, and then they will now have an idea of their uh, awareness of falling. So in our workshops, this is the next thing that we do. We like to create what we call a shock factor. When we do this, we don't tell anybody what we're doing because we want, we want this to be the most genuine, real shock factor type of thing, and it's so much fun, all right? So in our workshops, what we would do is take people with Parkinson's and we will gather them up and then send them out of the room. Then we talk with the people who are remaining and we say, OK, we're going to have those people come back in and they're going to walk for us one at a time. We're going to watch. We're going to watch them go two, three, four, five laps, whatever it is. We're going to be looking at these things. OK, we're going to be looking at stride. Is it even or uneven? What's the stride length? Uh, how does their center of gravity look? Is their posture way forward? Um, do they drag their feet? Arm swing, reciprocal arm swing. And if they do, are they swinging from the, the shoulder where it would be ideal or is it an elbow flexion? And things like that. We wanna look at their rotations. We look at these things. Then what we do is, okay, I'm gonna go back. We look at these things, we observe. So now we have the, obviously we have the people with Parkinson's come back into the room and I take this off and I go back to here because I don't want them to cheat and try to look good walking. We go, we're looking for these things. After each person has gone and people have just quietly taken their notes, we put in Naboso insoles. I always have them with me and we put them in their shoes. We say, um, sorry, Dr. Armley, here's what I say, because 
like I say in my workshops, I wasn't ridiculous, I'd be boring. So I choose to be ridiculous. I say, let's take these silly insoles and let's put them in the shoes. And these bumpy things, I don't even know. You know, let's just put them in. So you take off the, the socks, the shoes, put in the insoles, put them back on. Now this is where it gets really interesting. So I'm going to show you a few short videos and then I'm going to explain exactly what's going on. So this is a lady in Mexico. I go to Mexico a lot. She has Guillain-Barre syndrome. If you look on the left, you're going to see her walking in normal footwear. Just like in the workshops, we have people walk in normal footwear first. You also see her on the treadmill. She was bedridden back in January. The thing about Guillain-Barre is it is one of those diseases that can go into remission and people can come out of it. Um, she started moving more in January a little bit. If you look, you'll see on the left, normal footwear. On the right, you see she's already back to us here on the top right, right? She's, I think when I figured it out, she was eight seconds faster. We didn't ask her to run on the right, okay? We did not ask her to run. I'm gonna go back to this for a second. We just asked her to uh, walk. Okay, so I may not get back to that. My apologies. Haha. -ha. My apologies for some, here it is, okay. Well, no. Okay, so let's move forward. We, she started running on her own. That's just the way it went. I mean, we, we weren't gonna stop her from doing that. She felt so good. So this is Georgiana. Georgiana has Parkinson's disease. She, same thing on the left, shorter stride, not quite as good a posture. She's moving okay on, on the upper left video, but she's moving a lot better in the upper right. You see some arm swings starting to happen, right? More arm swing, velocity. Now, I actually stood back farther during the, on the top right video. You can see longer stride length on the bottom right video. I want to try to get this one very important one I want to get here. This one, Maricela. Okay, she has a condition called generalized dystonia. This poor lady is in such agony. She walked in with Ruben, one of my instructors, uh, helped her a lot. And you'll see he was helping her. She could not walk by herself. She walked into the workshop in Monterey, Mexico um, with assistance. We put in Naboso insoles. And not only um, does she uh, have difficulty walking, her feet were so, so distorted looking. It was absolutely heartbreaking. Just all different like hammer toes, crossover toes, foot drop, all this stuff. She had slippers on, but you can see here, he's gone from two hands to one hand. And then at the end, look at this. There she is all by herself, walking for the first time alone in a long time. All right, let's move forward to Marissa. Marissa, I met in Mexico in San Luis Potosi. She is a world champion figure skater. She had um, surgery on her brain, her cerebellum area. She could not walk on her own. This was back in June for the surgery. And then six weeks later, I saw her in San Luis Potosi. At the left, you'll see that she has a very difficult time with sway, and then this rotation is really tough for her on the left. Upper, upper right, she's all ro ro rotating back already. I mean, this was amazing. And I I didn't follow her out the door, but she actually started, started walking by herself outside. So let's, I think there's two more here. This is Angelus. Angelus is a friend. We put in Naboso in Monterey, Mexico. We put in Naboso, went outside and started walking. Five minutes later, no kidding, five minutes later, she starts to run. She said, I have to run. I have to run. So I happened to be with her, so I ran behind her, and then I tried to catch up with her. Um, this is the lady who came in completely feeling, feeling completely defeated by Parkinson's. Uh, spent most of last year in bed. 
Now she's running almost every day. And I was there about six weeks ago. She and her husband and daughter and I went hiking Mount Topo Chico and she left us in the dust when we were running up the trails. This is a lady whose life has gone 180 degrees in the positive direction. And I have one more, actually two more, but it's the same person. Uh, this is one of my favorites. This is Maria Salinda. Now, I have to explain before I start the video. On the left, I saw her at the clinic. She could only walk with assistance with her son or um, a, a walker. And then here she's holding on on the treadmill. I'll start this in a minute. I need to explain this first because it happens fast. And she has, uh, uh, her disease pathology has caused her to have tremendous amount of toe extension. She walks on her toes. Okay, so we have her there for video analysis. Two days later, upper right, you're gonna see the lady in the tank right here. This is her also. Not more than five minutes of wearing the Boso and she's walking heel to toe. 15 minutes later, look down here, she's running. This was the first time she had run in 15 years. Now, she is crying there and her son's there and the red and Jeanette's there and I was coming around with the camera. We're all in tears because we're so happy because this woman has her movement back. Um, I also wanna just say that Angeles earlier, um, first time in 17 years running. She's 42, said Park, since she was 25. Um, let's do one more. This is Maria Salinda as well. I was getting off a plane in San Francisco about six weeks after seeing her. She sent me a video. She's back to work after many years. And here she is in her lab coat. She's a doctor. She teaches at a university. She teaches chemistry. She's a chemist. She's walking, working, carrying her coffee and not spilling it and has her life back. So let's move forward into the real meat and potatoes right now because this stuff is why I do what I do, all right? I came in this business to help people, to help them help make a difference so they can hopefully get their life back. Well, what the heck just happened? We put in these bumpy insoles and you saw all that stuff happen? Well, first of all, I can, we need to learn. This is, this is my absolute number one favorite tool, far and above any other tools, the, any of the Boso products, the insoles, the mats, anything. Because the way Dr. Emily, I was, uh, remember being with her years ago in uh, Hoboken and her showing me a prototype said, it's good, but it's not right. Well, this is right. You got it right, my friend, because this stuff is working amazing. Um, it helps. So we know that the nervous system always works collaboratively. It likes to organize over a goal that it wants to achieve. And if the firing doesn't happen at a certain timing, in a certain order, then movement will not look right. It will look awkward, right? So optimal, when we think about training people, I'm not thinking about machines and weights and body weight. Not first. I'm thinking about wake up the nervous system because this optimal firing is far more important to help you move than to have great strength in areas that can't coordinate movement together, right? So you could be all big and bulky and do an Arnold thing, and that's cool, right? I wish I could do that, but I'm not. It doesn't mean I'm going to walk better or move better. It's not going to reduce my fall risk. So we want to be training to create optimal firing patterns in our brain and in our nervous system, the BOSO technology is one of the ways to get there. Why is that? Well, there's a whole lot we could talk about with this. Um, that's why Dr. Emily has these amazing workshops, level one, level two, and the rehab specialist and all that. But a brief summary in one slide, here's the way I look at it. Plan for skin stimulation, Naboso or not, you're going to receive so many benefits because these uh, this uh, planter skin is so highly densely populated, and if I remember correctly, I think it might be the most highly den densely populated with small, small nerve sensory and mechanical receptors. I think there are four kinds, so I don't remember the jobs they do. I just know that this is, this is the area we want to concentrate on because they're directly connected to the central nervous system and the cerebellum. So when we do barefoot movement, we wake up 
those nerves that they're not dead, but they've gone dormant because we're wearing shoes and socks for decades. Some people never go barefoot and they think it's weird to go barefoot until they do it and then they move better and now they're happy, right? So it helps us to wake up and pre-activate the nervous system and the brain, helps us to create better anticipatory responses and better reflexive stability, which uh, if you don't know about those, you must go to EBFA workshops where they talk about this in great detail. It's amazing information. And my favorite thing about it is it's immediate. All of the videos that you saw tonight, these are immediate results. This happened within a minute or less. It's immediate because that's how fast we can wake up the nervous system and the brain. When we wake them up, we get faster firing time, um, the better movement stability. I mean, the feedback I have from you know, Bosa Wind Souls, I've sold over 400 pairs now, so it's, I have a lot of experience with this. We have uh, more stable, more secure, more balanced, more confident. It's amazing. So when it comes to technology or products, my number one, my number one go-to, to is Naboso, uh, uh, any Naboso product. All right, so let's move forward. One of the things that's really good about this is that when we move better, we feel better. We've got a lot to go through in the next eight minutes. Uh, we also tend to move more when we're more confident about our movement. So we know that in Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and probably a lot of other stuff. Um, cardio is the best known method of exercise to slow disease progression and to de de delay disease onset, okay? Cardio, elevating the heart rate, uh, just a side note from Stony Brook University, Dr. Lisa Moratori, it would be the equivalent um, intensity of walking as fast as you can for 30 minutes every single day. And that's all you need to do because what happens is it creates this really cool stuff called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So not only does it create BDNF, it gets blood and oxygen going to the brain and it helps to improve cardiovascular conditioning, which is oftentimes very compromised in people with movement disorders. So uh, this is a side note though, but we are talking about cardiovascular, right? Well, in Parkinson's, side note, number two cause of death, people in Parkinson's disease and that population are complications from a breathing issue, um, pneumonia in particular. So if we can, get our cardiovascular improved, it's going to help us. So what, what about BDNF? What's so cool? Well, first of all, if we look at BDNF expression, when we're on the right side, which is an active state, so we're elevating our heart rate, we actually have increased neuron activity. It's like nature's antidepressant. Um, we can start to realize more uh, uh, what we call neurogenesis. We can help cell survival in our brains. Versus on the left, where you're not moving, you're not creating BDNF, you're more likely to have depression, be sedentary, less neuron activity, more stressed out, more anxiety, and all that. So what's so great about BDNF? If you read a book called Spark by John Rady, R-A-T-E-Y, Harvard professor, he's written many books, The User's Guide for the Brain, and Spark and Go Wild are my three favorite books of his. Uh, he also talks about barefoot a lot and go wild, which is really cool. It's called Miracle Grow for the Brain. So you get your heart rate elevated for this 30 minutes, right? What happens is it's a growth factor. It helps to keep chemicals in the system for longer. There's a better chance of uptake of chemicals like medications. And it helps to prevent cell death. And in addition to that, I, so I have to make a disclaimer. Doesn't mean we're going to stop a disease, but we can probably slow the progression, maybe delay, uh, delay the onset of disease. Uh, BDNF is produced, obviously, best by the um, direct cardio exercise. It helps to promote, uh, promote long-term maintenance so that these disease does not progress as quickly. It may allow medications to be... Uh, taken into the system faster and stay longer and may give birth to new brain cells, especially the hippocampus and the olfactory bulbs. So this is where I go back to the first couple of slides, well, earlier slides about Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Special note, anything I say is not intended to replace medications. It's meant to complement them. All right.
So let's talk about this. Remember we talked about Alzheimer's and what's going on with the hippocampus. Well, guess what? We There's a study that came out with the Maria Schreiber Foundation uh, a year and a half, two years ago. Shows that people with early onset Alzheimer's who do cardio every day are getting their memory back. And I can tell you out of nine people that I've been following in Mexico since early July, after six weeks, five of them um, reported improved sense of smell. Well, maybe that's because, let's go back, BDNF, let's go back to the beginning. They're moving more because they woke up the nervous system with the bozo insoles. They're getting their heart rate elevated. They're creating BDNF. They're slowing disease progression. And maybe, maybe they're giving new births, uh, brain, births and new brain cells through BDNF and through all this cardio to their olfactory bulb, which is the area for sense of smell. I don't know, I'd like to do a study on this though. I just know that they're happy and they're moving and they feel so much better, they've gotten their lives back. Now let's move towards another thing. I'll just say real quickly, my favorite thing to use for posture is kinesiology tape, in particular, I like rock tape. Um, it's really good as trainers, we can use it within our scope of practice if we're approaching it from the standpoint of external cueing. Uh, we're not treating pain, although pain reduction might be a side benefit. Um, vibration therapy is cool. We're gonna blast through here. We only got two or three minutes left of slides. Um, through vibration therapy, we can wake up the plantar skin. Uh, I like to actually have people use the Naboso mat or use the insoles while they hold this vibrating ball. We know that uh, going back here, a lot of times we'll see people at a workshop, we give them a vibrating ball for five minutes. If they have a tremor, a lot of times five, 10 minutes later, tremor is gone. This is a temporary fix, but it helps them if they're trying to do something, maybe they wanna eat or button a button or write. And so they hold the ball for five, 10 minutes, tremors go away, they can do those things better. Uh, it helps to uh, leave, uh, relieve constipation many times smile fascia releases more effective with vibration um, we also know it helps with various types of dystonia restless leg syndrome and many other things so vibration therapy is is wonderful if you go to my website which you'll see at the end get a, a paper written by a neurologist friend of mine dr alfonso Pisano, about the positive effects of vibration therapy and he has one of these hypersphere balls he loves it anyways the power plate is another one now dr emily has something going on with power plate in using her Naboso surface, which I haven't seen yet. And I really want to see that. And I want to use that and try it because that just seems like a beautiful combination of power plate with Naboso surface. Power plate is awesome. Quanta therapy. These are one inch round discs. I'm just gonna say real quick, we have had absolutely amazing results with quanta therapy, frequency therapy. It's absolutely amazing. I won't spend much time on it right now, but if you have if you want information, I am one of their instructors and I teach and wrote their Parkinson's program. So we're finding uh, extreme benefits with this, especially with the dopamine patches, the leptin patches and other things. <clears throat> NeuroConnect is a set of clips, three clips. I actually have mine on right now. Basically this NeuroConnect is, Connect is another therapy that I like. Uh, you can just read through here. Basically, it's, it's the specialized nerve receptors uh, in uh, uh, muscles and joints. This helps to kind of create a pathway, wake those up uh, faster. This, this thing somehow triangulates, and it just gives a nice, clear uh, nervous system passage. Um, it, just, it just causes your brain to wake up, the nervous system, and it's really awesome. When we use this in combination with Nervosa, um, it's fantastic. Um, another thing though, it's not an actual tool or product, but it's been around a while. This is the last thing. Cognitive training. Well, why is that such a big deal? Well, because if we're having trouble, if, we're, if distractions are causing us to fall, like when we have Parkinson's disease, um, we know that the substantia nigra is still functioning, but it's outsourcing to the cerebellum and other areas to develop as a movement control center or a better movement control center. Why, how? Because neuroplasticity, the brain has this amazing ability to reorganize and create new neural firing patterns to adapt as needed, okay? Think about when you ride a bicycle. 
the first day you rode, if you're like me, you fell over and you had two bloody knees. Well, yeah, my mother was worried and it was pretty bloody and awful. But after a week or two, I was good at it. That's because every time I got on, I was doing this, creating synapses, synapses between neurons that actually ended up being into neurons that fire together because they fire together would be my bicycle riding neural pathway was solidified and the wires together and then it stays there and unless you have you know some type of injury or a stroke that's always going to be there and that's why when you're um you know not riding your bicycle for a few years but then you get back on there's that saying oh it's like just like riding a bike. Yeah, that's because the neural firing pattern is still there. It's just a little bit rusty, it's dormant. So you get on the bike and in five, 10 minutes, it's woken up. You didn't have to like relearn to ride and take two weeks to do it. So why is this important? It's because during focused movement, we want to train. I do this with everybody. It doesn't matter who it is, but I especially do it with movement disorders. We want to train the cerebellum to be a better multitasking device. All right, so during focused movement, we can do various forms of cognitive training. Things like uh, saying names of friends, family. The other day I had one of my clients, Jerry, uh, we're doing hand-eye coordination. He's jumping lateral through an agility ladder, single leg, zigzag, and he's, I say a state, he names the capital, and then he spells the capital forwards and backwards. Say the output backwards, do math equations. Uh, that's direct recall. We can do spatial awareness. Jerry, how do you get to your neurologist's office from here? That makes the the brain fire differently, the cerebellum fire differently uh, than direct recall. And then, of course, decision making is fun because we can do all kinds of things to have people uh, cause them to have to decide something very quickly. Maybe it's I'm cueing punches like hit me right, right, left, left, or it's opposite. I say right, you hit left. I say green, you hit blue, whatever it is. Um, these, when we do this, what happens is we have focused movement and cognitive, and we create more of this stuff, neural firing patterns. And then this actually helps with our dual tasking, because dual tasking is uh, one of the primary reasons that people fall down, especially with movement disorders. So if we can do as many varieties of these things during focused movement to create new neural firing patterns, it's going to help them to move better, reduce fall risk, and hopefully reduce or eliminate falls. Last thing here of cognitive, uh, I kind of got this from Dan Edwards of Parkour Generations. We do parkour for Parkinson's when I teach at his facility over there because you have to figure out with a parkour ob object, I'm going to go, how many go past it? You know, under it, around it, over it, or through it. So it involves decision making and spatial. So it's a combination. And it's really cool. And we have so much fun with parkour for Parkinson's. People love it. Now, let's move forward. There's a couple other things you can do. Um, I'm almost done. We can have people, I, if anyone wants this slideshow, uh, well, you'll see it because you can go back and look at it. So there, I'm not going to read through this because I want to leave time for Q&A. This will be recorded so you can go back and you watch, but check out this slide. There's things that you can do here. There's more you can do here. We know that like one of the best things to do, I like to put in the most Naboso insoles. I want to have them doing stuff that makes their head move so the vestibular is activate, activated, that their eyes are tracking so we have visual going on during a focused movement and then add on uh, maybe some hand-eye coordination too, plus cognitive challenges. These done simultaneously on a uh, proprioceptively enriched stimulation environment like Nervoso mat or whatever, we put agility mat, two mats or three mats down, and we'll have people jumping through agility ladders on the Nervoso mat. That is really fun. I just thought of that and I had to tell you. So remember in this deeper brain stimulation side, do as many things as you can. Remember to be safe, safety first. Do what your client can, not what they can't. You want to challenge them, but you don't want to hurt them. So you may have to start out with just something and then layer, build layers and layers on top. All right, so as we come to an end, the last device I'll show you is the Witty Sem uh, neuro, neuro Brain or Neurotrain at Project Move 
um, has a similar system. It's not this system, but we use it for reactive training. There are many systems out there. They're doing some great stuff over there, neural training. Uh, basically, it's the lights light up and it's reactive training. I think probably originally designed for athletes, but we do it with people. We do it with everybody. All right. So I think that's, oh, it's not it. This is out of my scope of practice, but just know that there's a thing called the Portable Neuromodulation Stimulator Pons. As far as I know, it was recently uh, approved by the FDA because of the cranial, cranial nerve seven and the cranial nerve five. Um, when you put the pons, it looks like this. Oh, oh, maybe I don't have a picture of it. There it is. It goes under your tongue. And then this, this pathway through those nerves to the brain creates a wake up call. And it is absolutely amazing what people are seeing with this. Now, I'm not sure as a trainer that I can do anything with this, but just know, tell your people, Go to your doctor and ask about the ponds because they're going to be happy if they get one of these. And that is it. So thank you so much. I went a little over. I'm terribly sorry, but there's a lot to talk about. I am. Uh, this is where you can get me my email. You can WhatsApp or text me. Uh, Parkinson's Regeneration Training.com. If you want to sign up for a workshop, um, we would love to have you attend. I promise you a life-changing experience. I also have an education website, which you, I didn't put this code, but if you write the code intro offer, I N T R O O F F E R, all one word, in the coupon thing, it'll take it from 15 a month to 10 a month. We have hundreds of videos uh, talking about all the things that we do. So thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you, Dr. Emily, very, very much. I am ready for any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carl. That was super informative and very jam packed with information in. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, if you guys have any questions, I would encourage you to type those in in the questions tab. And then we go, we'll go through um, a few of those in the next uh, couple minutes. While you guys are thinking of uh, some of the different questions that you may have, um, I will mention that the Naboso insoles that Carl was using in the videos that he demonstrated was the Naboso 1.5. So I get asked that a lot when we share the videos and we discuss the videos that Carl um, had shared with us and, and was discussing is that was with the 1.5. We also do have the Nero, which Carl has started integrating with some of his um, Parkinson's clients to see some of the different results. All right, hold on, Carl. Let me see if there's any questions. Um, so are there any particular combination of devices or therapies that makes cognitive training more effective? So what, what combination, I guess, would you get the most out of cognitive training? Ah, let's see. That's a good question. Um, I think the most important thing is to be doing some type of focused, uh, challenging movement. Um, and it should probably, you know, they have a test in the neurology world they do where you just walk and you walk down the hallway and you turn your head left, you turn your head right, you turn back and forth. You could just be doing that and doing a cognitive trend, uh type of exercise like like was described there. Um, as far as combinations, I think it really depends upon the, the person you're working with and what their level of ability is because you will find that cognitive decline is uh, quite common in many neural degenerative disorders like Parkinson's and especially Parkinson's. Um, so you just have to assess where they're at with what they can do and then just build on to that um, and progress. Um, as far as combinations go, I just try all kinds of different movements. I try to include either Naboso in their shoes or have them do it on a mat so we get that stimulation and um, just start getting creative with different types of cognitive training during the movements. Okay, excellent. Um, Carl, if you don't mind going forward one slide, I want to mention the sure. discount code. Yes, so for everyone who has tuned in, 
Uh, we are offering a 10% off any purchase through Naboso using the code WWNAV. Enter that code, we would get 10% off. And uh, as we wrap up, uh, last thing that we'll wrap up with is, Carl, could you tell everyone about your book? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the book. The book is coming along very nicely. And um, I still owe you an outline because you're so kind of being uh, considering contrib contributing to it, which will be an honor for me. This book is what, what I intend for it to be and the way it's looking is just a massive resource. Uh, similar to the workshops, I, I forgot to say this in the beginning, I'll just say it now, I've never found like a bad Parkinson's program or anything, but what I find is I just find that so much information out there, it just, it's missing so much, it's missing, it's incomplete. And you know, my program is as complete as I know how to make it be, but it, I know it's not where it'll be in six months or a year or 10 years from now, and I, I'm glad. But the book is going to be a really, really good resource for people with Parkinson's, anyone interested in Parkinson's, or working with people with Parkinson's. Um, I haven't officially named it yet, but it's probably going to be Parkinson's Regeneration Training with some type of subtitle. And we have many, many wonderful contributors. Uh, Perry Nicholson wrote the forward, it's just a beautiful forward. Uh, many neurologists who have contributed about falls, fall risks, um, breathing, ventilatory parameters. Um, oh man, I have a lot of medical people who've contributed. So yeah, the book, um, it's a work in progress, but just stay tuned because it's, it's happening. Excellent. So I would suggest everyone follow Carl, follow him on social media, or follow Physio Chains and <coughs> get yourself into one of his trainings. Carl, thank you so much for your time and dedication to um, really helping positively impact lives. And I mean, seeing those videos honestly makes me tear up every time. Um, well, so thank you, thank you for your hard work. Can I add one more thing? Because this is so important. Just thirty seconds take some of these people who come in and they they can't roll over like Angelus couldn't roll over for five years she never rolled over by herself so we taught her how to roll this is a modified dr perry pattern that's a modified grape cook pattern but it works so she she came in feeling this happens all the time though she comes in feeling defeated and her husband dragged her into the workshop she wasn't going to come. As soon as she rolled for the first time in five years, she became a fighter. And then we put Naboso insoles in her shoes. Now, this happens with so many people, but I was just talking about her because um, it was just an amazing turnaround. So when when this happens, and she starts running now for the first time in 17 years, and she can roll over. And last year, she was bedridden. And this year, she's running. Her whole emotional state changes. The family's emotional mental state changes. Now she's back to work. I mean, this ripple effect is huge. And what's probably more important than the movement itself is the psychology and the emotions behind it. Because when you feel better, you're probably going to move more. Because you're more positive. So I, I really have to, my hat's off to you so much for what you've done because you've helped me to help people to help themselves to turn everything around and it's it's absolutely you just can't even imagine the impact this has it's very deep now oh, that's awesome thank you so much thank you to everyone who tuned in thank you to everyone who has supported Nuboso in our journey and for your dedication in human movement and helping others. And if you are a consumer or a patient tuning in, thank you as well. Have a great night, have a great day, and we hope to see you on another webinar Wednesday. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>